Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 I'm back. What's up, everyone? Swain here with the introduction of my newest video series called Pro Tips. This is the series where we look at important game mechanics in the game to grow your knowledge of the game and how to be successful playing it. So today we are going to be talking about defense break mechanics and why it is such an amazing debuff. We are going to be talking about the defense stat itself uh, and then we're going to be talking about defense break mechanics. We're going to discuss a couple of strong free to play player uh, monsters, I'm sorry, with consistent defense breaking capability. And lastly, we're going to talk about some uh, counters to defense break. So before we get into defense break, as I said, first we need to understand exactly what defense is. What does it do? Well, you guessed it. It, it, it does reduce damage the monster takes. But defense is often overshadowed by its tanky brother named HP. And with the likes of monsters like Lucian, Arnold, Ramagos, and other defense ignoring monsters HP tends to be the preferred tank stat by most players there also does seem to be a stigma towards defense simply because a lot of people don't really know how it interacts with damage reduction and really until my research for this video until all that was kind of done I, I wasn't really sure exactly how defense worked either uh, while there's not exactly an exact data kind of pool or anything like that that come to us has released in regards to the formula that's actually used in the game there's some users that have calculated some rough equations as to the approximate damage reduction multiplier which does seem to be fairly accurate in my opinion um, one reddit user in particular provided some really great information uh, that I believe is more or less correct so shout out to Roger Manor for his post on reddit and we will go to that right now. As you can see, he's provided some information that I, I think fairly accurately predicts the reduction multiplier number used for monsters of specific defense values. So for example, let's say your monster's raw damage is 10,000 damage, and you calculate raw damage by multiplying your total attack power by whatever the skill multiplier is, and in this for these examples, we're not going to be including critical hits or uh, any of those kinds of things. We're actually, I'm going to be making another video at some point talking about how to calculate all of that stuff more in depth. Okay, so you have a monster with a raw damage of 10,000 damage, and let's say you attack a monster with 700 defense. As you can see, according to the chart, the damage dealt is going to be approximately 6,000-ish. Uh, the exact number according to the calculation, would be 5,914 damage. So you, hopefully you can kind of see how that works. Um, so yeah, so now that you kind of understand the role of defense and how some of that works, so you multiply the raw damage times the defense uh, modification number, and then that's the, raw, that's the total damage that you're going to end up doing. Let's talk about what this video is really about, which is the defense break debuff. Defense break is a debuff that can be applied to a monster through using their skills. Uh, some of these skills do damage, like Darian's first skill, while others simply apply the debuff without inflicting any damage, like the water pirate captain's third skill. The debuff's primary effect is lowering the total amount of defense on a monster afflicted by the defense break debuff effectively increasing the damage that your monsters will do to that monster. Most frequently, the defense debuff lasts for two turns. However, some monsters apply it for only one turn, while others can apply it for up to three turns, like Annabelle. It isn't an incapacitating debuff, like stun, freeze, and sleep, so monsters like Vramos can remove the debuff with his passive, and monsters with the debuff can still attack unrestricted. As I mentioned, the main effect of defense break is that it lowers the target's defense. And before I started researching and testing the amount of defense reduced, I honestly believed that it was like a flat 50%. I no longer believe that that is true, based off of the numbers that Roger Manor has calculated 
in addition to what my field testing seems to suggest. So I believe that the actual percent of defense reduced is higher than 50%. In some cases, it's actually much, much higher than 50%. Yet, this number does vary depending on how high the affected, monster, the affected monster's total defense actually is. I was able to do a bunch of calculations, and I literally did testing for almost two hours, so I'm not going to show you that footage because it literally took forever to do. But, long story short, I was able to calculate that on Garden Forest Hell Stage 4, the very first wave of manned boar have approximately 600 to 650 defense. And that on Farron Castle Hell Stage 3, the first wave living armors have approximately 1,300 defense to 1,350 defense. So based off of the table, I can fairly safely say what the average defense um, is of those monsters and what the amount of defense loss is when defense break gets put on those monsters. And I did many, many tests with this with multiple monsters to make sure that I was getting the correct data. And I feel very confident that I can say what the average defense loss is and resulting damage increase that will be at two major uh, key multipliers which can be extrapolated into other targeted defense values just by using some simple math and algebra. So a monster with approximately 600 total defense with defense break is actually going to lose 90% of their total defense. That's right, you heard me correct. 90% of their total defense, which will result in a 50% damage increase. And a monster with 1,400 total defense with defense break will end up losing about 66% of their total defense, resulting in a 100% damage increase. Now some of you are probably thinking, wait, what? Even though monsters with lower defense lose more percentage, they end up doing less increased damage with the multiplier? Well, to put it simply, yes. That's exactly the way that the math works out. And actually, when you think about it, it makes sense. Because even though the lower total defense is losing a higher percentage of its defense, the higher total defense is actually losing more of its defense uh, pretty significantly, actually. So the 600 defense on defense break loses a little over 500 defense, whereas the 1,400 defense on defense break loses almost 1,000 defense. So does that make sense? Even though the percentage is higher on the lower monsters, the actual multiplier of increased damage is significantly higher on monsters with higher defense. Another thing to note is that even though defense break on high defense opponents has a higher damage multiplier, you will likely do much more damage, like much more actual damage, on the lower defense targets despite the lower multiplier due to the defense reduction multiplier, which is the, the number on that chart that I showed you initially. So in other words, if you have a Theomars, you know, and he's dealing 20k damage on a Lucian, he's probably only going to do about 10k damage on a defense stacked Eladriel if both of them are defense broken. Hopefully that makes sense. So even though the multiplier is higher for lower defense monsters of lost defense, the like damage increase multiplier is going to be much higher on monsters that have much more much higher defense. So I know that some of that is a little bit complicated and I hope that you guys can hang in <laughs> hang in there with me with some of that because I know that the math gets a little complicated. But there's also some other really important things that we need to talk about in regards to defense break that are extremely important. There's some hidden stuff with defense break that occur when a target has defense break on them when fighting in auto mode. There's some AI kind of shifts. As you know, monsters in auto mode will always seek out targets that they have the elemental advantage over. So light monsters will always attack dark monsters, water monsters will basically always attack fire monsters, and etc, etc. However, when an enemy unit has defense break on them, all monsters will target that monster as the priority. 
So uh, let me show you what this looks like in Arena. Okay, so as you can see, I've applied defense break to the opponent's Darien. Every single one of my monsters is going to be attacking that Darien from now on until the defense break gets removed. Arnold should normally be attacking Chasun because the green arrow, he has elemental advantage on her, but he's not going to attack Chasun. He's going to attack Darien. And everyone is going to attack Darien despite what their elemental advantage or disadvantage is. So I'm going to hit the auto button and we're going to see how some of this works. Okay. There we go. As you can see, every single monster is targeting Darien. And now he's dead. Simple as that. Okay. So now, you know, we can go through the rest of this fight and every single example is going to show the same thing. Now, this is an interesting exception right here, as you can see, is that when I'm fire monsters, even though there's defense break on a water monster, they won't always actually attack it. If the water monster gets to very low HP and has defense break on it, it's actually fairly likely that the fire monster will still attack, see, as you just saw Arnold do right there. However, it's not super consistent. It's not always a guaranteed thing. Um, so that's kind of the one one of the main exceptions to this defense breaking rule. Um, but as you can see, the general idea has been proven with this. If you want to, you can actually test this theory out just by yourself doing some different tests and things like that, and you'll see the exact same results. So that is kind of the story behind that. As you can see just from that quick example, utilizing defense break uh, for arena, guild wars, and dungeon runs, uh, specifically for arena defense and guild wars defense, because uh, those are obviously on auto mode. Um, and dungeons are often auto mode as well, but it's mainly important, I think, for uh, arena defense and guild wars defense. But that using defense break can vastly improve the effectiveness and killing potential of your team just by utilizing the basic AI mechanics programmed into the game. So how sweet is that? Sweet is candy, if you ask me. Candy that's been made by the candy man, specially made by hands of gold, and taste tested by none other than Mr. T. In other words, it's pretty awesome, and should absolutely be utilized in the majority of team compositions that aren't manually controlled. I strongly, strongly believe that the vast majority of arena defenses, Guild Wars defenses, and dungeon teams need to have at least one consistent defense breaker for that team to reach its maximum potential. Now, that is just my opinion, but I really, I really do think that it's true. A team that isn't focusing on killing one monster at a time will likely be outhealed and shrugged off by monsters like Amen, Belladion, Chasun, and the list goes on of amazing healers that can really just shrug stuff off. This becomes especially true once you pass the fighter rankings and join into the likes of Conqueror and other higher level opponents in Arena and Guild Wars. A lot of strong defense breakers also provide exceptional utility, healing, and sometimes even damage to warrant their spot on a team. There's definitely a reason why so many upper level players discuss the importance of this debuff in their videos and forum posts. It's very clear to me. And hopefully with some of these reasonings you can see why. So now that we've discussed the actual mechanics of the defense break debuff, it's now time to look at a few monsters that are exceptional defense breakers that are obtainable for all players. First up, let's take a look at Bella Dion, the Light Inugami. Bella's first skill gets powered up to become a 100% defense break, as you can see here, uh, that is active for two turns, which can really cause a headache for your opponents. In addition to her first skill always proccing defense break, her other two skills have extremely high utility as well. Seize attacks an enemy and removes all beneficial effects and Mobilize increases all allies' attack bar by 30%, while additionally healing all allies by 36% at max skill level. Every attack on this monster is useful in almost any situation, and Belladion can become an effective part of nearly any team due to her high utility. 
I would suggest running Bella as violent with either revenge, nemesis, or focus runes with speed, HP, HP on 2, 4, and 6 with some substats focusing on accuracy, speed, and HP percentage. But also if you can, like get some defense percentage and resistance percentage in there as well because that won't hurt either. For early to mid game, a swift focus build will also work for Bella Dion just fine as well. Next we have another infamous light monster and that monster's name is Darien, the Light Vagabond. Darien's first skill at max level provides a 100% two turn defense break that scales according to his max HP. This skill, Slash Rocks, can hit hard, especially if the target is still defense broken from Darien's last turn. His second skill is called Slash Waves, and it's decent, attacking the enemy twice with each attack having a 50% chance to land the attack debuff. And even though this skill does have some occasional use, it's honestly pretty outclassed in my opinion by his first skill. And his final skill is his passive, and this, I love this passive, it's one of my favorite passives in the game. So Knighthood provides a 15% damage reduction for all allies besides himself. And it essentially makes all of your other allies much more difficult to kill, whether they are squishy or tanky to begin with. It really increases their tankiness and it makes your team really survive a lot longer. The typical Darien rune build is Violent Revenge or Triple Revenge with HP, HP, HP on 246 and with substat focusing on HP percentage, accuracy percentage, and resistance percentage. Um, some people also like to look for some crit rate, crit damage, and defense, um, but it really depends on the person. Another fun build to use with Darien is actually to basically turn him into just like a tanky bruiser and make his first skill hit really, really hard. And this is done by um, keeping the Violent Revenge or Triple Revenge runes, but instead doing HP percentage, crit damage, and HP for um, the 2, 4, and 6 slots with substats focusing on HP percentage, crit rate percentage, accuracy percentage, and resistance, mainly on crit rate and HP. Both these builds are extremely effective, um, especially for Arena Defense and Guild Wars Defense. Um, if you don't have access to strong Violent Runes or Revenge Runes or anything like that, um, a full energy build on Darien works well as well. There's lots of other notable uh, defense-breaking monsters, including but not limited to Jubel, the Dark Vagabond, Bernard, the Wind Griffin, Raok, the Fire Inugami, and Vigor, the Water Werewolf. Each of these monsters uh, have consistent to semi-consistent defense break along with some various levels of utility which can be really great for different team comps. So lastly we're going to be discussing how to, count, how to counter monsters that utilize the defense break strategy to enhance their team comps. Arguably the best way to prevent defense break from doing any harm to your team is basically preventing it from ever landing on your monsters to begin with. And this can be done in three different ways. The first and probably most obvious way is to kill the monster with defense break or monsters with defense break immediately. However, this cannot always be done before the defense breaker attacks, especially if they are very fast, like Belladion typically is. The second way is to stack high resistance onto all of your monsters. And this is most easily done through leader abilities like Katarina's or Tessarion's. This method can be somewhat ineffective sometimes, though, because oftentimes enemy defense breakers have pretty high accuracy. The third way, which is definitely, in my opinion, the safest way to go, is to bring monsters with the immunity buff, such as Chloe, Draco, Delphoi, and Fedora, among many other monsters that can provide that buff. This is typically the most effective way to counter defense break because immunity provides guaranteed resistance of debuffs and harmful effects, which also includes stuff like stuns and freeze, glancing hit debuff, cooldown resets, and other dangerous effect-based abilities. 
Another way to counter defense break is to utilize cleansers like Vramos and Konamiya to remove the defense debuff after the fact, you know, after it gets applied to your monster. This method is a little bit more risky typically as it doesn't prevent the debuff from landing and the attack order isn't guaranteed to be in your favor. Sometimes the enemy monsters will be able to attack before your Vromos or Konamiya or whatever other cleanser you have ends up getting a chance to attack, like gets to move. Not to mention that the AI priority effect will be active as long as the debuff remains active on the target, so that also can cause some issues. The last way to counter the debuff is really less of a counter and more of a compensation for the debuff. Uh, providing defense buff to all of your monsters completely negates the defense reduction, thus allowing your monsters to take the normal damage as if there was no defense buff or defense debuff on them to begin with. The main drawback to this strategy is that the AI priority will remain on that defense broken target, which can cause some issues, and you know the defense buff can also get removed, um, which is also, of course, another issue uh, with the immunity effect as well. At the end of the day, I think the most effective way to counter defense break is to either kill the defense breaker just right off the bat immediately if you can, or bring monsters that can provide the immunity buff for some safety. As you can hopefully see, the defense debuff provides some amazing synergy within team comps and is clearly one of the best debuffs in the entire game due to its damage modifications and AI target priority. Thanks everyone so much for tuning in to the first Pro Tips Guide. I hope that you guys have learned something new and increased your knowledge of the game mechanics and strategy within the game. That is definitely the goal of this series, so I hope that I was successful. Thank you all so much, especially to my subscribers and dedicated fans. I look forward to talking to you all again very, very soon. Swain out, yo!